What's up guys, it's Ike here, bringing you guys another video as always. In today's video, we're going to be making a Yu-Gi-Oh! side deck uh, tier list. And it, hear me out, if you don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I know I don't typically do it on my channel, just stick around for the video. Uh, you might not know exactly what I'm talking about, but you'll probably get the general idea of what cards are good and what cards are bad. And also, if any of, of what I'm talking about interests you, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Or... Check out Yu-Gi-Oh, preferably. Without further ado, let's hop into the tier list. So first one up is Alpha the King of Beast. And Alpha the King of Beast is uh, a pretty good card, I would have to say. Pretty good uh, form of removal, just like putting it on the field and then like retrieving it back. Uh, very good synergy with Beast. Uh, but personally, I think it's just solid D tier. Not good at the moment. It's not good. It's still... It's not bad, it's not F tier, and you don't, and it's not at the don't play. You know, you can play it in certain decks, but, uh, just not good in my opinion. Oh, uh, sorry for the, uh, doubles. Uh, next up is Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler No More, if you're playing this card, then you're, you're just, uh, stupid. I'm gonna be honest. Like, Dark Ruler No More literally gets shut down by Witch's Strike, which is a tech card. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Uh, it also gets shut down by, uh, so many different cards, like, N uh, not Nibiru, uh, Mechaba, uh, Dragoon, almost, all the Eldritch cards can play around it, it's just horrible, why, like, why would you play Dragoon, especially with all the trap removal, too, like, there's no point, it's not a combo format, it's a control format, if you're playing Dark Ruler no more than, uh, whoever... If you're playing against someone and they have Dark Ruler no more on their side, or even their main, that's a free win in my book. Uh, next up, oh sorry, that's awkward. <laughs> next up is uh, Artifact Scythe. Artifact Scythe, I would have to say is... Uh, sorry, my camera froze for a second. Uh, it's so good, I just don't think it's that good at the moment. Uh, just not its format. I mean, it can stop prevent extra deck, which could be absolutely absurd. Don't get me wrong. It's just that half, like, Dogmatica doesn't even need their, their extra deck anyway. So, I mean, it's good. It's Artifact Scythe, really good. Just not the right format. Uh, I, I, I would give it a C tier, but I'm just going to give it a D because I just don't think it's good. It's not really worth it yet. Oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa there, buddy. Uh, Artifact Scythe. Ooh, easily S tier. My bad for the camera slipping on my part. Uh, but yeah, Artifact Scythe. S tier. It literally stops every single deck this format. Stops Virtual World. Stops Eldritch. Stops Dogmatica. Stops Shadal. Stops, uh, Invoked. Stops, uh... I would, whatever there is, it basically stops everything. S tier. If you're not playing this in your side deck, like this format, then you're just a moron. You should be playing three copies of this in your side deck at all times. Like, uh, like you might be saying I'm going a little overboard, but it is that good. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, also another S tier easily, because Harpy's Feather Duster is so good. Like, it literally just wipes everything. And the back row removal and back and ba the back row is getting a lot more prevalent this format as well. So having that removal is just absolutely absurd. I mean, honestly, if you're not playing in your side or even your main, you're kind of crazy. I mean, unless you're like tight on space because you're really trying to out Dragoon or Calamity or something along the lines of that. But that's probably like the most, the probably the best back row removal right now. Oh, sorry for that burp. Next up is uh, Pinker Tops. Pinker Tops, easily A tier. I wouldn't put it at S because it's uh, still a good card. Uh, highly recommend playing it in the side. I just don't think that it really needs to be played. Like, I think, I think you're, you should... I'm going to put it at B because I think you should just be more focused about playing... Uh, cards that really counteract certain cards in this meta because you really need to prepare for Calamity and Dragoon and Mechabun, some of those cards more than along the lines of just 
having a good basic general side deck card in my opinion. Uh, next up is Solemn. I'm gonna put Solemn at C tier because Solemn Judgment it's good, but it's not quite good. It, I mean, it's like you should be playing Solemn Strikes in your main than playing Solemn Judgment. It's not gonna be bad, especially if your deck goes second. But most decks don't even go second this format, so it's just not that good. I I wouldn't recommend playing in the side. I mean, you can play maybe. You could put in the side if you want to. Uh, DD Crow, uh, easily A tier. I mean, best form of graveyard removal. It's not once per turn. I don't really need to say any more, to be honest. Just play it in your side. That's probably like one of the best ones, too. Uh, next up is Solemn Strike. Hi, then. Alright, sorry about that. So next up, like I was saying, is Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike, easily S tier. Honestly, Solemn Strike, you should be probably playing in your main deck. <laughs> if you're not playing in the main deck, then at least play three copies in the side. Easily S tier right now. Probably the one of the best traps to play in this format. Uh, next up is D Barrier. Uh, Easily A tier because most decks are like right now are either using Xyz or Fusions because like Dogmatica, Sh um, Shadal, uh, Dragoon decks, uh, Calamities, uh, let's see, uh, True uh, Double A Zeus, Zodiac. D Barrier has gotten quite good in my opinion. Solid A tier. Uh, next up is Evenly. I have to say, like, Evenly. Is probably as good as Pinker Tops because uh, if you go second, your 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 opponent's obviously gonna have like maybe two or three cards more than you, and that's still pretty good. It's like battle phase, you know what I mean? Like that's just kind of it's still scary, you know what I mean? But it's not really preparing to take counteract certain cards in the metal, so I just don't think it's as good. But it's still quite very very solid and strong. Uh, next up is Troll and Lockbird. Okay, so this is quite controversial because uh, some people say play Ash, but if you play Droll, you just lock them out of drawing. And then, so then they can't even draw, and then you have two ways to Ash them. So basically, they're like really pinned down in a corner, and that's really awesome, especially with everyone like going through their deck right now, like Virtual World can go. There'll be, like, 24 cards, like, like one player I went up against at Locals, he had 16 cards in his deck after his first turn, or even second turn, whatever it was, and if you just draw them, they're basically screwed, so, uh, I would have to say, uh, easily A tier, probably, uh, oh, that's a tough one, I would say D Barrier is probably better than DD Crow, and then Droll, oh, whoa, Droll, better than dd crow but yeah that's just my personal opinion uh quaking mirror force actually pretty good calamity out uh i mean nothing really much from there it's just pretty good to stay alive it's more like kind of like a magic cylinder but better because it still is technically a semi out to dragoon i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna give it a c tier yeah <laughs> going up where with solemn judgment uh, Skullmeister, I'm gonna give it a C tier, this format. Honestly, it's just better to play 3DD Crow in a Ghost Bell, because that's like four outs for Graveyard and stuff, than it is to play DD Crow, Ghost Bell, and Skullmeister. It just doesn't make sense. It's like the third one I would resort to, in my opinion, so I just wouldn't really play it. I mean, if you want to play it, definitely go ahead. It's not like don't play at all, like Dark Ruler is, but... It's not really, like, worth it. Next up is uh, Forbidden Droplet. Uh, I would totally give this an A tier. Oh, whoa. Yeah, an A tier right there. Uh, yeah, y'all can see it now. Definitely an A tier. Pretty good, just being able to get all that advantage, just stopping things. It, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's still very solid. Uh, next up is Anti-Spell Fragrance. Okay, this is going to be very controversial when I talk about this one. Uh, I don't think it's good. I'm going to be honest. 
I wouldn't even play it because you have to set down all your cards right now. So if you're a virtual world player, you have to set down all your traps before you can even activate them. Well, obviously, but like even your spells, like that, that's not, I didn't mean traps. You get what I'm saying. You have to set down your spells before you activate them instead of just activating them directly. I mean, sure, you could activate this last, like go first, play it, then activate it. But like just for yourself, like you would rather just like play through your cards. You know what I mean? Instead of having to time it. I mean, I guess you can still play it. Uh yeah, it was better than I thought in theory, I'm going to be honest. Now I'm talking about it. I'll, I'll give it an... Because it's just so much removal right now. It's like... Yeah, I, I'm going to stick with what I said. I'm Don't even play it, because there's so much removal. And you have to have timing. There's really no point in playing it. Uh, Denko Seka, uh, probably an F tier, uh, because you just have to... Almost every deck right now is using their normal summon. And, like, the same thing, like, anti-spell fragrance. But it's even worse. But it's still better to play it because, like, in your side... Actually, yeah, I guess it is better for some decks. Like, some rogue decks might be able to play it because they can have their normal summon. So, I mean, it's alright. Better than anti-spell fragrance because... Anti-spell fragrance can just get wiped out with removal. Speaking of removal, the next two cards coming up. Twin Twisters. I'm going to give it a solid B. Uh, uh, the discard, like, pop two, basically, really solid, very solid. Especially going up against Uplitch. Highly recommend. But Red Reboot, also probably about a B tier. Pretty solid, again. Uh... Just basically the same like Twin Twisters, but it's just like shuffling back in. Uh, really good. Uh, Cypher and Gamma. Okay, this is controversial. Uh, I'm going to give it a C. I think it's only good going second, and it takes up four cards in your deck. And, like, why play a new hand trap engine when you could probably just put in Droll or DD Crow or even your Lancios instead? And it's not even worth playing it in the main deck at this point as well. I just don't think it's good. <laughs> I'm just going to be sorry. Gamma Seal. Okay. This is an interesting one. I actually think this card is a lot better than people get it credit for. Uh, being able to out uh, Calamity. I think there is like a standby phase thing. But I don't think too much people know about it. So uh, I'm going to give this an A tier. Right? Because I think it's just that good. Because... The fact that it just, you can use your opponent's monster, you could use Calamity, you could use the Eldritch, you can use uh, the the Matica, you can use their own, well, no, you can't target, my bad. Forget what I said, but you can target the Mecha Bar. They couldn't negate it, but, I mean, well, can they? I'm, I'm not sure, I'll have to fact check that one. But, pretty solid, in my opinion. Uh, next up is Triple Tactics Talent. This is the last one. In my opinion, uh, it's not that great, this format. Uh, I'll give it a B. It's still a solid card. I'm not going to deny that it's not good. Because, I mean, it's like draw two, shuffle one back, you know. It, it's like three of the most broken cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Put in one. So it's still going to be good, but it's just not great, this format, especially with more people opting to go first and just trying to uh, generate more advantage. It's just not there yet. But without further ado, uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you uh, think my tier list was somewhat accurate, or I know my exclamations might have not been, but make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.